I'm Carl Martin Adueso, and this is EE132, Electrical Circuit Theory 2. So our first topic is about polyphase systems. So a little bit of introduction. Majority of power is supplied to consumers in the form of sinusoidal voltages and currents or alternating current AC. Originally, Thomas Edison advocated a purely DC power distribution network. Now, Nikola Tesla and George Westinghouse, two other pioneers in the fields, proposed AC distribution systems as the achievable losses were significantly lower. So, during this time, there was a war between DC and AC. So, Thomas Edison highly discouraged the people of the AC power distribution, he electrocuted animals to show the dangers of AC power. Nikola Tesla, a very brilliant man, introduced the induction motor and the first polyphase system. So nowadays, generating, transmitting, distributing, and using large blocks of electric power is accomplished with three phase circuits. The analysis of a circuit we learned in EEE-130 or Electrical Circuit Theory 1, we have the transient and statistic response. So for the polyphase systems, the transient response of AC power systems is of interest when determining the peak power demand but fortunately, an understanding of only the steady state sinusoidal behavior of three phase circuits is sufficient for engineers who do not specialize in power systems. So, the war of currents DC versus AC. So, why did AC win? So, at that time, power was distributed at low DC voltages. So, at low DC these voltages, you need very thick wires which cost very high for high power transmission because currents are very large. So the, the main problem was that when transmitting DC power to places very far from the generating plant caused too much loss in the line due to the high currents and high resistances of the wires. So what they did, they installed another generating plant near the community, adding to the cost of the system. Now for AC power, at that time, it was very conven convenient to step up AC voltages to very high levels with the use of transformers. So this resulted in thinner transmission lines, so less cost and lower currents flowing through them, so low power loss. So for example, if we have uh, this community, community, example, they consume uh, equivalent load labeled as P load. So we have P load is equivalent to VI, voltage times current, where current is equivalent to P load over V. So, in this equation, if you increase the level of the voltage and having, having this as constant, if you increase the voltage, the current decreases. We know that the power losses in the transmission line is equivalent to I squared times its resistance. So if you increase the voltage, the current decreases. So in turn, the losses across the wires or the transmission lines decreases. So that was the main 
uh, advantage of the AC power. Balance three phase voltages. So three phase voltages are often produced in the three phase AC generator or alternator whose cross sectional view is, is shown below. So the generator basically consists of a rotating magnet called the rotor. So this is the rotating magnet. And it is surrounded by a stationary winding called the stator. So three separate windings or coils with terminals AA, so this is A, A, these are the terminals B, B, C, C. So these coils are physically placed 120 degrees apart around the stator. So as the rotor, rotor rotates, its magnetic field cuts the flux from the three volt from the three coils and induces voltages in the coils. Because the coils are placed 120 degrees apart, the induced voltages in the coils are equal in magnitude but are out of phase by 120 degrees. So a typical three phase system consists of three voltage sources connected to loads by three or four wires. So which are called the transmission lines. So the voltage sources can either be Y or delta connected. So this is Y, this delta.